Hello, future Boringly Makers, and welcome to our live question and answer broadcast about the School of Aviation and Transportation Technology at Purdue. Tonight, we'll be answering questions about several aviation technology majors, including our Aeronautical Engineering Program, Aerospace Financial Analysis Program, Airline Management and Operations, Airport Management and Operations Programs, and our Aerospace Financial Analysis Programs, including our Unmanned Aerial Systems Program. For those of you specifically interested in our professional flight program, that will not be specifically discussed tonight. However, there is a linked video below this video to an earlier broadcast where we spent about an hour and 15 minutes speaking specifically about flight. Vicki Gilbert, our recruitment and placement coordinator, is usually the host for this broadcast, but she is unavailable tonight. My name is William Larson, and I'll be standing in for her today. I'm a senior here at Purdue, double majoring in the School of Aviation, and I have a double major in airline management and operations. I come from Champaign, Illinois. To start things off, congratulations to all of you on being admitted to Purdue. We are glad that you were able to be here with us and chose to join our session tonight. We have two professors here joining us in addition to a number of student panelists, and I'll ask them to introduce themselves in just a moment. You're welcome to send any questions that you might have to us at any point. Submit your questions in the YouTube chat window below by signing into your Google account. Kathy Pullings from our recruitment office, along with our technical director, John O'Malley, will be monitoring the chat and will try to get your questions passed along to me so that we can address them throughout this information session. If we're unable to get to your question during this information session, don't fret. Please feel free to contact techrecruit at purdue.edu and we will respond to your questions in the following days. As we begin, I'd like to introduce our panelists to you. Starting off with Professor Davis. Good evening, Professor Davis. We will start with you. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm actually the associate head here at the School of Aviation and Transportation Technology. Plus, I teach in the aeronautical engineering technology area, too. So uh, I'll be answering those questions for that tonight. With our next professor, good evening, Professor Rose. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Professor Rose. Uh, I am a professor here, newest professor in our unmanned aerial systems uh, major. So I'll be answering questions about that. Thank you, Professor Rose. Now on to our student panelists. Would you all please introduce yourself, tell us your major and where you're from, starting with Allison. Good evening, Allison. Good evening, William. So hi, guys. My name is Allison Boyd. I'm a junior in aeronautical engineering technology, and I'm from Washington, Indiana. Thank you, Allison. Moving on to Dutch Bird. Hi, everyone. My name is Dutch Bird. I am a junior in unmanned aerial systems, and I am from southeastern part of Ohio. Awesome. Thank you, Dutch. And now on to Alex Janes. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm a uh, sorry. I'm Alex Janes. I'm a junior in uh, airport operations and airline management as a double major, and I'm from Traverse City, Michigan. Awesome. Thank you. Now moving on to our questions. Let's get things started. So starting off with you, Professor Davis, would you be able to tell us first what the classes are kind of structured like here in the School of Aviation? Uh, and sure. what's the build do on like labs versus classes and what kind of projects are involved in our classes? Oh, yes. So as far as the AET program is set up, we have, since it's a part 147 curriculum, which means that students are eligible to test for their airframe and power plant certificate through the FAA, uh, we do have lectures and, and labs that are that make up our courses. And so the students, as they go through that AET plan of study, they're actually looking at uh, that particular area. So then uh, we've got um, most of the lectures are uh, in the earlier part. Uh, so let's say a freshman would come in and you'd have maybe one or two courses that are lectures to begin with. And that's pretty much across the, the each plan of study. Then as we get further into involved, so you may even have one or two uh, classes, for instance, our NDT lab or course is actually a lecture in a lab. And those are the first semester. So you'd be getting involved in lectures and labs right off the get go. So and then as we get into and, and Professor Rose is going to speak to the UAS side of it. But as far as some of those uh, all the way through the program, you're going to have lecture and labs uh, for the majority of the AET or the AT courses. So. Awesome. Thank you, Professor. Moving on, uh, Allison, uh, Dutch, and Alex, would you guys give us your perspective on your class experience and the projects that you have done through school? So we'll start with you, Allison. Yeah. 
So again, I'm an AAT, Aeronautical Engineering Technology, and what I really like about the major is you get a lot of hands-on experience alongside learning the more engineering and theoretical principles. Um, what's also really nice about our classes is we're at the airport all day, so our lectures are hold at the, held at the airport as well as our labs, which makes it easier to access them and makes the commute easier for me as an off-campus student as well. Awesome. Thanks, Allison. We'll pass things on to you now, Dutch. Yeah, kind of as Allison was saying, the hands-on portion of the coursework I find to be very engaging and very useful. Um, I can learn pretty well in the lecture, of course, but it's not until I get to be able to do hands-on work, actually working with aircraft processing software, drones, um, and all the different tech that we learned in lecture, do I really get a better understanding for how it all plays together and how it can be applicable in the real world. Awesome. Thank you, Dutch. And then Alex, if you give us your insights on management. Yeah, so a really big thing with management is obviously spending a lot of time in the classroom and then being able to apply that to um, realistic situations within the industry currently, uh, exploring new demand, seeing where we can see new routes, um, seeing how we can better streamline communication potentially and kind of diving down the different avenues um, within the management parallels. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. So that gives you a kind of brief introduction to everything. Now we'll go a little more into the depth of the different majors. So Professor Rose, we would start with you. Would you like to give us some quick introductions to the unmanned aerial systems major? And for students who might already be admitted to Purdue for another university, uh, what makes this major really special at Purdue? Absolutely. Yeah, I'd be happy to talk on that. Uh, to give you a little introduction, uh, you know, we are an aviation program, so we're an aviation first program. Um, it's the first thing that makes us unique. Uh, and so with that, we're trying to teach you how to operate in the national airspace, right? It, it, we're sharing that airspace with a lot of different vehicles, commercial aircraft, general aircraft. Um, and so we, we teach you how to analyze the national airspace, and understand that airspace that you're going to be operating in and sharing. Uh, that's the first part of it. And then we also look at how do you maintain these systems, right? If anybody's familiar with the, the growth in UAS, they're getting bigger, they're getting more powerful, they're getting faster. So the result of that is we have to have people that can maintain them, right? We have to have people that can identify faults and fix them. Uh, so we get into a lot of that. And then as Dutch was was touching on, well, what what is the use in a, a an unmanned aerial system or a drone? Collecting data, analyzing your surroundings. Uh, and that's another big portion of the, the program. And of course, as Dr. Davis already touched on, we cap that off with a project, right? You've got to be able to develop something or create some project um, to turn into your uh, customer. A lot of times the customer is us. A lot of times it's somebody that we work with in industry. So I guess what, what makes Purdue special is probably what we have beyond just at the airport, right? We've got Everything here at the airport, we've got an active runway uh, that, if you may have heard, we'll bring bringing in commercial operations soon. Uh, the students do their flight training there. We've got um, lab facilities out here to do research with UAS. And then if you want to extend beyond that, you can find somebody on campus that's working on whatever it may be that you're interested in. So if you want to figure out how to measure the weather from a drone, which is my background and specialty, there's somebody on campus that can tell you exactly what what that uh, temperature profile that you identify is telling you. Um, so there's a lot of other opportunities here at Purdue, and I think that's probably the, our biggest feature, if you will. Awesome, thank you for Professor Rose. Uh, moving on to you, Dutch, as you are a representative student in the major, uh, what drew you to UAS here at Purdue? Yeah, UAS was something that I started to get interested into. Um, about middle of high school, I actually sold a dirt bike that I had to buy my first drone. And from there, it started just taking pictures, maybe editing, editing them a little bit. Um, and that's kind of where my interest for drones got started. But then it became time for me to figure out what, what did I want to do after high school? Where did I want to go? I knew I wanted to go to college and I knew I wanted it to be something in technology. And I had just got this new interest in drones and I remember. My mom did a lot of searching and she came across once that you could actually get a degree in drones. And this sounded like the most amazing thing in the world to me. And it was fairly new at a time. At the time, there was only 
a handful of programs and universities that offered this type of degree and Purdue being one of them. And they were actually the first um, campus that I toured that had drones. They were, they were the closest to Ohio. Um, and so we came up here and I got to see a little bit of the program, the airport, just the campus in general. And that alone kind of getting to see all the technology that I would be able to participate in, get to be involved in and getting to do that all while studying drones, learning more about drones, learning the uses and going deeper into drones than just the pictures and the videos that I was taking. Um, but Purdue alone, it, once I got on campus with just this interest in drones, I got the feel of Purdue and I found it was like, I got a big 10, big school experience, but it was, it was in a cornfield. I wasn't surrounded by city. I wasn't surrounded um, by a whole lot of people, pretty much Purdue is Purdue. There's little towns around it, but Purdue felt like comforting and, and safe and welcoming. And I think the people that I got to meet when I first came here really made Purdue what it was and kind of solidified that, yes, this was kind of the place for me. Awesome. Thanks, Dutch. A little follow up on that as we've emphasized the very core hands on experience we have. Can you tell us how quickly you were able to get into flying the drones in addition to the like kinds of different types of drones that we have here at Purdue? Yeah, of course. Um, Professor Rose kind of touched on it in the beginning. When you come into the unmanned aerial systems program, you are learning a lot about the national airspace. Um, that first semester, you will work on getting your part 107 certificate if you don't already have it. Um, and during that time, you will start flying on the simulator. Um, here at Purdue, we just want to make sure that you are knowledgeable, that you are able to, to fly the aircraft in a simulator before sending you out with, with these drones that we have. That way, if something does happen and crash, you can work out kind of those kinks and measures before you check a drone out and get to take one out. Um, so I started actually flying the aircraft that we have in our in my second semester so it wasn't long but i first got hands-on experience in my first semester I, I worked on um the mavic 2 pros that we have kind of the introductory drones and got to do hands-on with them learn the ins and outs of them while flying that same aircraft in the simulator so i got to fly it in a simulator but also get to see it get to work with it kind of get to know the aircraft before getting to go out into the field my second semester um and then as for what drones we have we have the DJI Mavic 2 Pros. Um, that's kind of your introductory aircraft, what you'll get hands-on with first. Um, recently, we got the new Skydio 2 Plus platforms. Um, they're really exciting. The, the computer, the computation that they do on board is, is amazing with the cameras that they have that sees their surroundings. Like it's, it's a really cool platform that I'm excited to get to dive into more and see where that goes for the program. Um, so those are kind of our two smaller aircraft. Um, on top of that, we moved to more enterprise aircraft, one being the DJI M210. They're a little bit older, um, but we still use utilize them because they are relevant in today's industry. Um, but more recently, and, and more students are turning to them, but we also have the DJI M300 aircraft, and it is probably the most enterprise aircraft we have here. We're able to unlike the smaller drones where they have a fixed camera we're able to swap out sensors so we're able to have like a regular rgb camera that you can take normal pictures with but we also have a thermal camera we have a thermal camera that also has a i think it's a either 150 or 200 times zoom optical zoom on it um, we also have lidar for making po different point clouds and all of these can be used together um, to make those kind of end project for clientele is that Professor Rose is talking about. Um, we also have a few fixed wing aircraft um, that students are, are working on and kind of learning on. Um, but pretty much we have a lot of multi-rotor, some of those enterprise, we have some basic ones. We have a great range for students to kind of learn on some that maybe is more on the consumer side, but also some that are very much relevant to industry today. So it gives, it gives a good broad scope of what is out there on the market that we, and we are able to provide that to students. Awesome, thanks Dutch. That gives us a really good overview of that. 
Moving on to Professor Davis really quick. Before I have you talk about AET, we were fielded a question from the YouTube. Um, for someone who's interested in pursuing a career in air traffic control, is that something we don't offer distinct, distinctly right now? Uh, what major at Purdue would they want to study in order to learn ATC in the future? Well, actually, right now, we, we were a CTI institution at one point, but we lost, as far as the way that was situated, some of the FAA requirements were set up to where uh, it would actually benefit you to come through the CTI program, receive that certificate here at Purdue. But the way it's set up now, it really doesn't give you a leg up against any other candidates that are interested in going into ATC. So uh, what I recommend to students is basically we have just put that on hold uh, as far as the CTI certificate from air traffic control for the program. But they have, uh, my daughter-in-law actually works for the FAA in Oklahoma City in the air traffic control training center. And uh, she's bilingual, so she is actually training air traffic controllers in Oklahoma City. But uh, the suggestion I give students there is to sign up for that program right through the FAA, because there you can actually go through that program, and then you're on the payroll as you go through that school. Now, I would recommend that you go through one of our programs, like aviation management, or whichever one would, would interest you there, because it's going to give you kind of more of a background for what's going on with air traffic control. And all that, but as you know, the person that sent that in knows quite well. I'm sure that we are have a severe shortage for air traffic controllers, so they are trying to work that to the best of their abilities right now. So they're trying to get as many folks signed up for ATC and get them to the to Oklahoma City for some of that training as they can. Awesome, thank you, Professor Davis. We'll be sticking with you for the next question here. Uh, moving into the AET side of things, how does aeronautical engineering? technology make itself uh, unique in comparison to the other majors in aero engineering through the College of Engineering at Purdue? Okay, uh, as far as the aeronautical engineering technology, so we're carrying the engineering title because of our ABET accreditation. So that, that allows us to have the engineering title in that name. And then as far as to compare us against aero engineering and astro, we are, we basically study some of those same characteristics and some of the design factors and things like that. But we actually, with our with our labs and with our hands-on practical experience, the students actually get to come out from behind the computer and go out to our actual test beds for our aircraft, for our test cells, where we actually have operating engines. And they they will run those engines and aircraft and you know troubleshoot them and learn about the systems. And they're right there in front of those students. So uh, that was one of the things that drew me to the program 16 years ago, because I just, just now, as of January, started my 16th year here at Purdue. I am retired Air Force, so I've been uh, dealing in the aviation business for 35 years with the Air Force, and and uh, so I knew quite well about the Purdue program. I think Dutch mentioned, you know, here we are, a Big Ten research or an R1 institution. So when I saw the AET program was offered here at uh, Purdue, I thought, well, it's time to maybe see if I could be part of that. So and and really, what we're looking at, we still, you know, a lot of folks think of the engineering, aero engineering, and you know, they understand that it's the design and the application side of it. But then uh, when that comes out, then when we look at the engineering side, as far as manufacturing engineering, quality engineering and things like that, those are the folks that are kind of where the, where the rubber meets the road and they're gonna make those systems that have been designed and engineered to that point actually operate and maintained. So that's, that's the biggest difference between aeronautical engineering technology and then aero or astro. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so moving on to you, Allison, as you're a student representative, what is the thing that made you choose AET at Purdue and what, you, what got you the most interested in the major here? Yeah, so what first attracted me to AET was I always knew I wanted to go into some kind of STEM discipline. I'm the first in my family to go to college and the rest of my family is blue collar. So I was attracted to AET because it had some of that engineering in it, such as Dr. Davis mentioned with the ABET accreditation, but it also had the hands-on experience through labs where you can earn your airframe and power plant certifications. So what I really like about AAT is its marketability. So you can go out into industry and you can work a design role or an engineering role, or you can work as a technician. Um, it offers you a lot of flexibility and allows you to change your plan during, before, or after a uh, graduation. So what I really like about AAT is its flexibility and also the close-knit community we have here 
within AET because it's a very small major um, compared to the rest of Purdue where you'll have typically between 30 to 50 students in your classes and your labs will typically see between anywhere between like six to 15 people. So you get to know everyone really well and you get to build a really nice community out here. So, well, pardon me there, I lost the mute button for a second. Um, <laughs> So we have a question on AET and some classwork for you, Allison. As it is an engineering focused major, we have questions on Purdue math. Um, so what's it like taking math 150, excuse me, 158 and 16010, because those are part of the required curriculum. I would say the math is very manageable. If you feel program does it have enough math for you? You can definitely pursue additional calculus classes. I have a few friends in AAT who went to go pursue Calc 2, 3, and 4. But here, um, for me, I just ended up taking pre-calculus and calculus 1. It was very manageable. Um, I got A's in both of the classes. And there's a lot of uh, help and tutoring in AAT as well as the rest of the uh, polytechnic for help with calculus if you need it. Awesome. Thanks, Allison. And as a person, uh current student myself, I did have to take both of those classes as part of my major. And just re-emphasizing what Allison says, uh, there's a lot of help out there for students in those courses. They're not designed to be very difficult. Um, so that is something that's very achievable for you as a student. Additionally, this is a course that everyone in aviation is taking. So you have all your friends here at the School of Aviation that you can study with and work on the homework with together. So that's a fantastic resource to you because everyone around you will be taking similar courses. So now moving on, um, I'm going to field a question over to you here in a moment, Alex, but I'm going to ask Professor Davis first. Uh, Professor Davis, what really sets apart the way that we do airline management and our different aviation managements within the School of Aviation? Because the way they do it in the College of Business for a different business degree is a lot different than how we do it out over here. Yes. So as far as the way we, we look at management out here, we actually expose you to the, the aviation environment as far as the airline man, management and operations, uh, airport management, because we actually, the airport director here at Purdue actually teaches some of the classes for one thing. So you're getting a perspective right from, from the airport director. And then we've got projects that are constantly being set up to where students can join the teams and, you know, they may be assigned to a Delta Tech Ops or a United Tech Ops to where they can actually go out to the field with those airlines and work right in those centers to see exactly what's going on with that. So we we basically try to get our students right in the right in the mix of things as early as we possibly can so they can see what what is going on as far as the aviation management side. Awesome. Thank you. Moving on, to you, Alex, why specifically aviation management at Purdue? Why not go to the College of Business? Yeah, so my big thing um, was just having that kind of aviation focus ever since I was a little kid. That was something that it's been a goal of mine to pursue aviation um, and not so much from the pilot side of things, but on the managerial side of things. So with that kind of shifting my gears, um, you know, looking at business, weighing the options, knowing this is where I see myself, this is going to benefit me the best way down the road, um, leaving, you know, Purdue with a degree in aviation management. Um, just looked a little bit better in my eyes than it would be as opposed to leaving here with um, a business degree or something along the financial realm and then inevitably working into those um, departments within the actual airline or um, aviation business itself. Uh, the other thing that you know allowed me to kind of play around with things was actually seeing the versatility that the management degree has. Uh, it doesn't just limit you to one specific thing as opposed to leaving here uh, with a business degree. Obviously, I'm going to go spend time in the financial side of things or um, do resource management and um, you know tasks along those lines as opposed to kind of living with aviation management. Well, I can go work on the security side of things. I can go work uh, on the financial side of things. I can actually go into scheduling, uh, work at an SOC. Uh, I can hop down with our AMPs and kind of communicate with them and know what they're communicating. Uh, I can do scheduling. So it really just gives you that versatility to, to mess around with what do you really want? And you can go as far as you want with that degree. Um, it, it's again, uh, extremely broad and Professor Davis already did a really good job at telling you they throw you out there uh, and it's, um, an environment where you uh, start to pick up on things really quick 
uh, and those project-based curriculum, especially, uh, it's really important that you, you know, hold up your end of the deal and you're out there, you're learning as much as you can, you're retaining it. You're, uh, I always use the expression, you're absorbing things like a sponge uh, and then you're using that applicability and applying that to the lessons that you're learning um, in the classroom. So being able to take this data set and then analyze it in the best way possible, um, write a couple codes here and there, and then be able to present on that five minutes later, you know, 10 minutes later, something along those lines is something we strive for in SATT. Awesome, thanks, Alex. And I'll give uh, my two cents on this. I've been asked to chime in as I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a double major, and one of those majors is our airline management and operations program. So when I came to Purdue, I initially only came for our flight program and decided it would be very beneficial to add this as a double major for me. Uh, some motivating factors behind picking up a double major while you're at Purdue um, are just the extra versatility, as Alex mentioned, that the degree gives you to branch out within the industry. Uh, yes, I might intend to be a career pilot. However, we live in a very fickle industry that can change uh, very quickly. So having this option that allows me to branch out outside of just flying is something that's very awesome. Uh, and it opens up a lot of cool new doors for me as a student in this program. And you also get a much better picture just of how the industry works because things are very complex. And this is gonna give me some really good knowledge that kind of helps me think both on how the managers of me um, as a pilot are thinking in addition to insights on how the passenger might feel because of some of the classes I've taken. So I found that it was very easy uh, to add that due to the similar course overlap in addition to just the great benefits I'll have down the road and the potential future options to branch out and add things in my career as a pilot. Yeah, well, and if you don't mind me um, just kind of adding to that too, just so um, you guys all understand as well, uh, double majoring here traditionally only adds, um, I believe it's 12 to 15 credit hours, um, depending on what degree it is. Um, with the management side of things, as Valerie said, there's a lot of collaboration and crossover between the curriculum. So it does allow students the possibility to double major in different sectors, um, like Will's doing professional flight and airline management. I'm doing um, airport operations and airline management, and I know students are doing AET and management. Uh, and it just gives you that ability to cross over between the two of them and cover as many avenues as you can. And we'll put it best, um, really exploring the avenue and understanding the different perspectives that go into kind of evaluating things. Awesome. Thanks for that input, Alex. So moving back to you, Professor Rose, we have a question here. Uh, what kind of support is provided by our professors and Purdue for our students who might be struggling in coursework to help them succeed? Yeah, for sure. Uh, what kind of support? Um, I, you know, I would say that uh, in general, my door is always open. And I, I think when I say that, I speak for all of the faculty. Uh, and since there's only two of us here, I think I can do that. Um, the only reason my door is closed today is because Dutch Bird is on the other side of it, out in the lab <laughs> on the other end here. Um, you know, but I, I would say that you, you are going to be challenged, right? And when you enter into a program at Purdue, it, and that's a good thing, um, you know, because if it was easy, well, maybe you don't really need it. Um, but you will be challenged. And, and one of the things that is very important for us as, as faculty is to be available to you to ask questions, right? Questions about the course content, questions extending beyond the course. You know, as a faculty member, that's probably one of the biggest joys of my day is when somebody says, you taught us this in class and it triggered another thought for me and I wanna know more about that, right? So, you know, we're, we're just people. Um, and so communicating and talking with uh, your professors, we're very willing and open to providing support. Um, beyond that, there's a lot of, in some of the larger courses, right? We've talked about how core uh, our courses out at the airport are. But a lot of the larger courses have the opportunity to, and I think some of the students could attest to this uh, a bit for me, um, because I haven't gone through the, the undergraduate curriculum at Purdue, but there's uh, opportunity for study groups, right? There's opportunity for small sessions uh, within those larger courses to really focus on, uh, you know, making sure that you have a good understanding, right? In a large, otherwise lecture. Um, yeah. Awesome, thank you. I'd like to have our students chime in on any experiences they might have with the different academic support services here at Purdue. Alex, okay. I'll go. I'll go first. I was doing that. But... 
Awkward. Okay, let's see who else wants to talk first. Um, yeah, my personal experience is um, Dr. Marete or Caroline Marete. She's not on the call. Um, I've had a lot of one on ones with her just to work through. Um, she taught me oh, 252 aviation projects. Um, I spent a lot of one on one time with her just making sure I was hitting all the curriculum. She does a really good job at setting up that class in the sense of um, you have kind of a weekly agenda and this is what you're going to submit by the end of the week. Um, so I, I want to say I almost had like a, a Wednesday evening appointment with her consistently where, hey, this is what we have um, just to make sure we're hitting all the points. And, you know, we talk for 45 minutes, just, hey, you can, guys can improve here. You can work on this. You can work on this. Um, I really like this. Or, you know, there's been plenty of times where she said, OK, I'm going to be blunt and say this looks terrible and I want you guys to start over. Um, and, you know, from there, you just say, OK, let's cook the books a little bit harder and then you turn it in on Friday and it always looks a lot better. Um, but you know, that, that having that ability um, to just walk over to your professor who is almost always down the hall from you, no matter where you are at the airport uh, and really have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with them. Um, I, I'm kind of blanking on the statistic, but it's a very small um, student to uh, professor ratio here at the airport. Uh, I know one thing that we strive for, um, especially is that 15 to one ratio with labs. So you have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the, uh, with the professor, with the TA, uh, and you're not kind of alienated from the rest of the group. You're very much so um, kind of, you know, a part of this greater system where everybody is pushed to do the limit to be as successful as they possibly can. And I want to say our professors do a really good job at making sure everybody's kind of on the same page. Um, they're definitely not afraid to call you out uh, in those smaller classes, speaking from experience there. Um, and it's just really that humbling environment to where, okay, you know, this is to get where I need to go. This is the input that I need. And maybe I need to spend a little bit more time talking to, you know, um, professor so-and-so and, -so and uh, you know, then for this other class, I need to talk to professor so-and-so. So it really just depends um, kind of that, that day in and day out for the students needs, but having that ability to just walk down the hall, um, if they're not on a zoom call or on a phone call, you can knock and, you know, a 10 minute conversation can save you two hours of hassle down the road. So really having that, that one-on-one -on -one relationship is really nice and just a, a great opportunity um, and a positive environment for the students. So, and I'm sure uh, I don't want to steal all the talking points. I see everybody else smiling. So you guys can uh, jump in whenever you want. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. And John, our technical director, has put up some web addresses on your screen for different ways to get academic support here at Purdue. If no one else has anything to add on that, I will continue on to some of our senior level class questions. Uh, Professor Davis, uh, do our aviation majors have a senior capstone project? Uh, and how yeah, do they we sure do. I'm sorry, I cut you off, so I, I apologize. But yes, as far as the, the there are senior capstones for each one of the plans of study, and I wanted to back up for just one second, too, and explain when I said that our airport director actually teaches some of the management courses, aviation management, I need to explain that Purdue is one of the only universities. There's only like four in the entire United States that actually owns the airport that we're at. So uh, it is that's where it makes it very unique out here. So I, I realized, as I said that, it's like, well, a lot of folks maybe be online and they have no idea that the airport is actually part of the university. So I, I just wanted to clarify that a little bit. Uh, and as far as the capstone projects, yes, each one of the plans of study has a senior capstone. Each plan of study capstone is set up slightly different. Uh, AET, for instance, it's, it has two separate courses uh, that are actually there. One is basically to lay out the problem and analyze it, build the teams, and then there's a due phase. So as soon as they, one semester, and, and they would actually lay that pro problem out. And then the second semester that they're working on, they would actually complete the task and you know we've had all kinds of different things as far as capstone projects and and our uh, Dr. Rop actually teaches the capstone for AET now on the the management side of it once again it's a project based uh, capstone project and then everyone is going to go through that and we look at it from the SATT standpoint that really it's it's a way of building teams because we know our students no matter what plan of study they're coming out of they are going to need to have those those team building skills in that and that just helps pull those teams together and let's face it COVID kind of separated everyone pretty well so these capstones really ended up bringing folks back and getting them talking to one another and and kind of understand what they would see once they left us and got out into industry so that's that's what we look at from the capstones. Awesome. Thanks, Professor Davis. And kind of sticking with you, what kind of internship and work experience is required in order to graduate from Purdue in our programs? 
Oh, well, we actually look at, you know, the, the professional experience. If you can, for instance, I've got students that have had co-ops uh, with the Gulf Streams, with Texrons, um, all this type of situation. We've got, so we've got the co-ops, we've got internships. We've got uh, actually right here in town, we have a GE facility that offers internships. And when I, when I speak internships, I'm talking about all the different plans of studies where it's, it's actually open. So uh, kind of a neat thing that happened today. One of my former students stopped by and he's working for an industry leader and he actually is looking for students. So he knew what our programs were all about. So he came in here and, and gave me the, the, the job titles and what the job descriptions are for the students that they're looking to hire for at the company that he's at. So those are the type of things that go on all the time. And our students are, you know, we, we want them to get out there and get that professional experience. We've got a couple of things that are pending right now. We've got contracts written with uh, industry leaders out there. They're coming in. We're actually working with them on apprenticeship programs. Uh, in fact, we're doing uh, supplemental type certificate evaluations for some, some of our uh, industry folks. And then, so we've actually got those projects. So we've got students that actually end up right in there as far as getting that that work ethic that professional experience right from the schoolhouse so uh, one thing that we we hear from our industry advisory board when we're, when we're talking with them is that what sets purdue apart is just the skills that they're seeing because they're looking at uh, providing us insight and in what their expectations are maybe five years out of school what they would like our purdue students to be able to do five years outside the school and so as they come back to report and a lot of those industry advisory board members are former Purdue students, they can give us that insight and then what their expectations are. So that's how we kind of tailor it. But we, we really uh, look at that professional work experience as something, first off, it's going to be great for their resume. And then going along with all our courses with our practical projects and those hands-on projects, it's something that a student can actually develop their portfolio. So we, we know that as far as providing resumes and things like that, most of the HR departments, they're looking at one pagers, but a way to kind of set yourself apart there is, you know, put your portfolio together of all the projects and all the different uh, committees and the, the student groups and all that you've been part of while you've been here at Purdue and show that to your future employer. And then that really uh, sets you apart. So that's kind of how we, we look at the professional side of it and the internship side. Awesome. Thank you, Professor Davis. Mm -hmm. Shift things over to our students now to share their personal experiences and internship and different opportunities they've had. So, Allison, uh, as we've been, we're talking a lot about AET. Would you like to tell us how you've been doing your internship requirements? Yeah, for sure. So I'm going to clarify this real quick. There is like an internship slash job requirement to graduate the aviation school. So if you can't get an internship, Purdue will help you get one. So that's really awesome. They'll uh, help you get one here at the school or somewhere else on campus. So I've worked since I've been at Purdue since my freshman year. I've been a flight simulator technician at our uh, flight simulator building here at the airport. Um, Fall semester of my sophomore year, I took a semester off to go to Houston, Texas and work for NASA and lunar mission planning. So while I was there, I helped plot like lunar traverses and AET was really helpful with that because we were able to identify how long uh, the bolts and nuts and the tires and the wheels on these rovers would last depending on how many miles or how many hours they were in operation. Um, and then last summer, I worked for Lockheed Martin in sustainment for a fighter aircraft, and then this upcoming summer, I'll work for Blue Origin as a NASA contractor working on lunar transportation again. So you have a lot of options what you can do. You're not just limited to aviation or aerospace. You're not limited to just technician work or engineering. Um, I'm taking advantage of everything, you know, getting that technical troubleshooting knowledge, as well as getting some of that design and sustainment and engineering applications as well. Allison is an overachiever, so we just she goes down to the sim building. So and actually she she needs to tell everyone how she has held that simul simulator building together because we've had a turnover in folks down there. So she's been the one that's been tasked to take basically take over the sim as we train the replacements. And so she's helping to train them and all that. So the experience that she's gained has been able to help bring in those new folks and get them up to speed down the simulator building. And as a student who is a teaching assistant in one of our simulators, thank the Lord for Allison. She has been a lifesaver to us. You didn't know this was going to be a commercial for you, Allison, right? 
to all the companies out there watching, Allison is the one to hire. <laughs> awesome. I'll kind of shift things over to you, Alex, if you'd like to tell us about your internship experiences. Yeah, so for the last uh, two years, I've been the intern up at Cherry Capital Airport, uh, TDC. Um, all the pro flight kids love to do their cross countries up there. Um, so it's always a fun little time when everybody hears about getting ice cream from the FBO there. Um, but I worked uh, really closely with the airport operations and airport administration department there. Uh, I started off working on my incident command system training, um, kind of working through the ins and outs of what that was like, um, a little bit of the financial realm uh, on the administrative side of things, obviously seeing how much equipment costs, um, kind of a wild assortment there. And then on the uh, airport operations side of things, I did a lot of um, airfield inspections, uh, runway mitigation, or sorry, um, wildlife mitigations. Um, we did do a little bit of sampling um, and the safety side of things, um, kind of exploring what could be done more efficiently. Uh, and I got to help um, with that, which was a really cool experience. Um, and then some of my bigger highlights, I've successfully helped in coordinating two air shows uh, with the US Navy Blue Angels and the US Air Force Thunderbirds. Um, so I'd say those are definitely my bigger highlights there. Uh, and then also just kind of having the ability to learn about what it takes to run a part 139 airfield, uh, the requirements that takes, um, the you know stringent rules that you have to follow and understanding and getting your hands on what it takes to actually do these things. Um, I've been able to do some really remarkable things, changing uh, taxiway signs, replacing lights, um, really messing around with airfield electricity in a safe way, just for the record, that wasn't anything that was uh, out there in case um, my bosses are listening, that was all within our compliance rules there. Um, but yeah, just having the ability to really absorb as much as I can and see what it's like to, to run a growing airport, um, you know, and seeing kind of the expansion projects and, you know, the big things going on. I got to be there for uh, the unveiling of a new ILS system, which was awesome. I was able to come back over the winter months uh, and work a little bit of snow operations. Uh, I worked two major snow events. Uh, and that was a really cool experience seeing what it's like from the, a northern airport perspective to maintain runway safety and making sure that we can still land aircraft safely, whether it's general aviation or commercial aviation. Uh, it's our job to go out there, uh, move snow, make sure that runway gets um, as cleaned off as best as possible and make sure it's a safe environment for uh, all involved and those who want to use the airfield. So, you know, having that ability to do that at such a, you know, a younger age, in my opinion, starting that at 18 years old was kind of a... <laughs> Um, I thought I would never really, you know, fathom, uh, especially going through your freshman year of college uh, and walking out with an internship is a rarity. Um, and it was a blessing that I got that. And since then, it's turned into, uh, I, I'd argue it's turned into a co-op because it seems like whenever I'm back home, naturally, I'm there working in some uh, shape or form um, doing an assortment of tasks. So it's just a really great opportunity to have a connection here. Uh, our airport administrator, or sorry, our airport director actually started uh, the operations department at Cherry Capital. So he spent some time up there and it was kind of, you know, your way to get your foot in the door there. Uh, he heard I came here and one thing led to another. It was a, you know, a phone call leads to X, Y, and Z. So it's been a great opportunity to just learn and apply what I've learned here to a real world environment saying, hey, well, we've been done this at Purdue for, you know, this event, we've applied this to the classroom and this is how we've improved things and being able to sit in and every now and then, you know, be the intern in the corner that comes up with a really good idea has always been a, a gratifying experience at the end of the day. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. And while we're on the topic of management there, we have had a question fielded. Uh, what is the life, a day in the life for you like as a student in uh, aviation management? And then have you, what are the opportunities to branch outside of the School of Aviation as well? Yeah, that's always an interesting question. Um, I am one of the probably busier management students um, just with everything that I'm involved with. Um, but usually uh, we'll take my Monday, for example. It's um, get up, get to the airport by uh, 1030. Uh, I'm in my 400 level classes right now. So I'm on the, the higher side of things. Um, and then uh, it will really vary, um, I guess, kind of as the day progresses, but it can be anywhere between a safety meeting with Stephanie for things uh, upcoming in the future, or it can be um, tackling some more homework assignments. But uh, really my day to day can vary, but I guess really to answer that question in an appropriate way, it's, um, Man, it is one of those tougher questions <laughs> with me, but, um, you know, it, it is showing up to the airport um, just because I'm at that stage and uh, staying down here, working throughout your course load, uh, divvying up what I have to do throughout the week and then, you know, kind of front loading things and working through it that way. Um, and then what was the, the second part to that question, too? 
So it was just uh, general the day in the life. And then what's it like trying to branch out of the School of Aviation? If you wanted to go get a major, let's say, in the College of Liberal Arts, or we'll say mm -hmm. a major in Spanish. Yeah, so it's really easy to do that. Uh, you just have to, um, in my case, I explored doing a minor. Uh, with minors here at Purdue University, the student has to do all the research, uh, figure out what classes they have to take there. With a major, you'll actually get assigned two uh, advisors to help you work through that. Uh, one through that particular school. So let's say we use liberal arts as an example. If you wanted to go get a second degree um, in some form of liberal arts, you'll actually have a school of aviation advisor, and then you're going to have a school of liberal arts advisor, uh, and you'll kind of work jointly on what kind of is going to mash together per your core curriculum uh, courses for both majors, uh, and what's going to overlap for extracurriculars or um, the I forget the technical term for them, but you're going to have your elect uh, sorry electives. Um, for both specific major and how those will cross over between them. Um, but having those two uh, advisors is really beneficial to you just because it makes it a lot simpler uh, in the sense of, okay, this one's specific to this and this one's specific for that. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. And shifting back towards the internship stuff, Dutch, would you be able to tell us how you've done your internship requirement? Yeah. So I, I had applied last last year for one and, and didn't get it. So unfortunately I've applied again to, to Duke Energy with their UAS operations. So still waiting to hear back from them, hoping for good news and I'll have an internship, but I've still been able to get real world experience, even with not an internship yet. Um, hopefully one on the horizon, but I've found myself there's, there's been things that I've been intrigued by interested in that maybe isn't directly covered in the coursework. And I've actually turned it into a research project that I have done for over a semester and a half, almost two semesters at this point. Um, and it's allowed me to see what people are doing in industry, um, looking at problems that they have, looking at kind of where is tech right now, technology, where. What is our, right now I'm doing a, a project on solar panels. So using a drone, the M300, one of our enterprise drones with the thermal camera um, and doing scans over a local solar farm. And I'm able to de detect hotspots um, through that thermal camera, some that you aren't able to see with the naked eye. And, and that translates to real world industry because that helps um, them, the, the farm that I'm working with, that's a, that helps them get maintenance quicker. They're able to quickly identify where those defects, the hotspots are defects in those solar panels so where, where it's breaking down and not working as efficiently. I'm able to quickly identify where those hotspots are, where it would take probably a technician or someone on the ground hours to do. I can do a flight in, in 30, 40 minutes and have all the data that they need to be able to um, kind of see where those hotspots are. So I've been working closely with them, um, working with professors have provided great insight on maybe what is real world experience? What does that look like? What, what pieces could you be missing that industry may be having problems on? So that's where I go out and that's start reading about the industry. What are they doing out there? What issues are they running into? So then learning like what can I do next here at Purdue with the resources that I have? And I think that's another cool opportunity. Research is another cool opportunity that we are able to participate in. Like, like professor said, we are an R1 Institute. And so being able to kind of take these ideas that you have, these interests that you have and kind of turn them into a project, um, something that you can bring to life that is tangible. Um, I've been, actually been able to take this project just from an idea that I had all the way to now, I've I've presented at two poster sessions. Um, it's something that is leading to more and more questions that I have, which leads to to extend extending this project more and more and more. And it's just something that I have quickly drew an attraction to, and something that I'm as I'm in class and in my coursework and in lecture and lab, I'm in the back of my head thinking, how can I apply this knowledge? to that research, which ultimately could potentially lead to helping industry or helping the, the way we conduct, in my sense, drone flights over solar panels to detect defects. So even if you don't have an internship yet, like myself, or you don't get one within your first few years, I think there are still ways here at Purdue, it, whether it's your coursework or, or a research project that you can get and engage in real world.
industry. Awesome, thank you, Dutch. And a quick note on all of those internship experiences, we do offer numerous career fairs, obviously, here at Purdue. Uh, the School of Aviation, we actually offer our own career fair. We offer one each semester in the fall and the spring. Um, and those uh, bring in all of our different aviation companies uh, to network for us, specifically in aviation. Through Purdue, we have access to all of the other colleges and schools um, career fairs as well. So we can actually go to the Polytechnic uh, career fair, which just so happens to be occurring tomorrow. Uh, in addition to the other colleges, career fairs, we have a lot of students in our aeronautical engineering technology program who will actually go to the College of Engineering's career fair to order, in order to learn about additional opportunities as well. So there's a lot of different opportunities through the different career fairs that you can become involved in. Uh, there is a link right now that should be on your screen that goes for our career fair. So please feel free to take a look at that at, excuse me, take a look at that if you are interested. So moving on to, uh, I kind of mentioned on the connections there with companies for our career fairs. Professor Rose, would you be able to tell us what kinds of uh, connections we have through our faculty to help support students, uh, whether they're taking its class classes right now or going off to a job in the near future? For sure, yeah. Something that's unique about our, our faculty pool in uh, the School of Aviation is that a lot of them came from industry. Right, so with that, they carry all of that industry experience and all of the networking that comes with that, and they bring it to the university. Um, and, and most of them are very willing to share that. Um, you know, I think so. Uh, touching back on, on Dutch's project, I, I think he may have undersold it there. I've got a feeling that you'll probably be reading in the news before too long that Duke Energy bought his patent on AI interpretation of solar panels, but uh, you know, maybe that was an undersell. Um, you know, there's a lot of us that are that are also curious, right, about how that research works. You know, I I am working. I'm Dutch's advisor on that project, and I don't know the answers, right? So I'm very curious about it as well. So I I have the incentive to fulfill my own curiosity to reach out into industry, contact Duke with him, uh, to make those connections. Um, you know, something else that's important that we we do is we buy a lot of platforms here. Um, you know, I. I Dutch didn't mention this, but he actually manages a lot of those platforms with a team of students. Um, so we've got about 50 different aircraft here. And we've got students flying them all day, every day. Uh, and so that results in a lot of maintenance. So we've got a core team of people that are maintaining those aircraft. Um, and so when we buy an aircraft, we're buying into generally a fairly small company, right? DJI is definitely not a small company, but Skydio is it started out as a startup. We've been working with them over the years. We bought their part of, we bought into their fleet. Uh, we've got some aircraft from Sea Astral. Um, we're looking at partnering with another company that I just recently visited this summer um, called Delta Quad in the Netherlands. Um, and so we don't just buy aircraft, right? We partner with these companies so we've got a long-term relationship. And that's probably one of the, the first stopping points that we make for students to get that industry experience, but also set them up for jobs, right? So these companies keep in touch with us. You know, Skydio is constantly reaching out. Uh, they come here to do demos, right? And we facilitate a lot of those demos. We get them, um, get the location. We organize the people to come out and visit. I always bring my students to those demos as well. Um, they're part of our industry advisory board, right? And they're they're looking at, well, what, what would we want from a Purdue graduate um, if they were to come work for Skydio? And we start to we start to tailor our program to that. Um, so when we buy an aircraft, a lot of times we're buying this partnership. Um, one of the things that we took away from our industry advisory board uh, meetings over the years is that people really want to see technicians that can maintain an aircraft that hasn't been made yet. That's the neat thing about UAS is a lot of these aircraft haven't been made yet. They're a concept, they're a design, right? We, we're moving into the advanced air mobility space um, where we're going to have to have technicians that can maintain an aircraft. And so when we partner with these companies, that's usually what we try to facilitate is we'll, we'll learn how to maintain these aircraft. And in the future, particularly with uh, Delta Quad, and hopefully I'm not speaking too soon on that, um, will become a, a service station partnering with them, right? So when an aircraft fails in the US, they'll ship it to us. Our students will analyze that aircraft. You'll learn then that that particular aircraft. So when, 
with Delta Quad as an example, is looking to hire somebody, you're the expert. Um, so of course, I think we also mentioned that we have got a lot of uh, career fair opportunities. Um, if you're savvy enough, you'll use Purdue Aviation Day to network and talk with all of the companies that are here. Um, you know, they're they're presenting to us, but you could certainly present to them. Um, and then when it comes down to to looking for a job, you know, I think the the fact that there's so uh, the the student to faculty ratio is in the students' favor. Uh, we have a lot of time to work directly with students on resumes. Uh, the number of resumes that I've looked at over the last couple of months is through the roof. Um, and I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to take the experience that I have and help to translate that uh, into your resume, right? So how do we, in, uh, the experience that you've gained over your four years, how do we interpret that and put it into a resume? Um, in addition to that, the student council will host a uh, resume and I think the students could probably fill in more information, but we do a faculty panel and we'll review students' resumes. Uh, I think that's once a semester we host that. Um, so you'll get four faculty members in a line at a table uh, and then students just bring up their resume and we review it on the spot, provide feedback. Um, and, and you can go right down the line between the different faculty members. So I've done it for a, a few. Um, I know we've had some people from AET and management and pro flight. Uh, and so we all chip in to make sure that you are industry ready. Um, and that's that's the best way to appeal to these these companies is by being an expert and presenting and we help you present yourself in the best way possible. Awesome, thank you, Professor Rose. So kind of moving off into that career preparation that he mentioned, Professor Davis, would you be able to tell us some of the kind of career opportunities that students in our aeronautical technology program and our various management majors can proceed into? And I believe you're on mute right now, Professor Davis, so. All right, sorry about that. Uh, no, it's one of those situations where you name an aviation company or aerospace company, you're probably going to have a Purdue alum at that company. So, uh, you know, the folks are coming out of the management side, the aviation management, they're going into uh, the airlines as far as, you know, managers and they're moving up through the, the ranks pretty quick because uh, we hear about the pilot shortage pretty regular. We also hear about the technician shortage. But if we look at all the different jobs in aviation, it's everybody's struggling to find the right people for these positions. So the management folks are going into the airlines, they're going into uh, the, the OEMs, as far as the uh, Boeings, the Airbuses, the things like that, Gulfstream, Gulfstream can't talk tonight. But uh, as far as we've got students that have gone to NASA, we've got students that are uh, even gone to the Caterpillars because a lot of folks uh, forget that Caterpillar actually has a turbine uh, side to their company, but they, so we've got students that have gone into CAT and those types of situations. We've gone, have people that have gone to the, the uh, big three as far as the automotive, just from the skills that they've received here at Purdue in the School of Aviation and Transportation Technology. So, I mean, we even have some classes that aren't on the normal plans of study that are available, like a we teach a Lean Six Sigma advanced manufacturing course, so that it's aviation focused. But when you look at those skills and those those tools that are taught in that course, that prepares you to go into pretty much any any uh, business service as far as project manager, those type things. So it's, it preps you for about anywhere that you would like to go. So if I sat here right now, I could give you the you know we've got students that at Gulfstream. In fact, the student that stopped in today was BAE, so they're Rolls-Royce, Pratt & Whitney, GE, um, you know, name every airline, and we've got folks uh, in, in the management side that are there. And then uh, the good thing about it is a lot of them do come back for the career fairs, and uh, they so they're coming home to their alma mater, and then we we keep this thing on a uh, on the motion to keep those Purdue students going out there into the world and, and making things happen. So that's pretty much how we look at it, so. Awesome. Thanks, Professor Davis. Same question for you, Professor Rose, if you could talk about the UAS side of that. Yeah, I'd be happy to. So the UAS, you know, I, I think we've kind of talked about this in a few of the degrees. It's a very, it's a very broad degree, right? So your, your opportunities are pretty widespread. Um, I was jotting down just some of the, the, the 
opportunities that um, we've seen some of our students uh, become a part of. Uh, so I, I'll just rattle those off. Um, we've had a, a former student that is now working as a space or a, a launch engineer for SpaceX. Um, you think about it, there's a lot of autonomy that has to go into getting an aircraft into space with or without a human on board. Um, we focus on that that autonomy aspect. How do you how do we maintain it? How do we program it? Um, looking ahead at at uh, the Indiana Department of Transportation, uh, we've got a student that now works there. He's very interested and in, and in focused on that remote sensing aspect of UAS. So, uh, some of the work that he does is crash recreation. So, if there's a, a large accident or on the the roadways or a train derailment, uh, he's one of the first people called in to grab that three-dimensional imagery and create a 3D model of exactly what happened. Um, of course, we've also got some students that uh, are currently applying to jobs. Um, so Wing, which is a, a Google company or an Alphabet company, um, they've got a job that a couple of our students are applying for and, and have an exceptional chance at getting. Um, Airbus and Boeing, uh, a lot of people don't know it, but they've also got their own uh, UAS arm um, that's thriving. Um, Archer is another one. Um, and then we've got some students who uh, don't want to work for somebody else and they start their own startups. Um, so we've got one that's uh, actually local here to West Lafayette. Uh, it's Uniform Sierra. So that's a, a startup developed from our, our program. Um, so it's UAS students, uh, AET students that have partnered together and they've been running this for several years now. Um, and so they've, they've got their own aircraft that are utilized for um, emergency services. So they sell largely to police force. Um, and they're starting to get into the, the public safety realm of things. Uh, another company, Griffin, that's local, um, that was started out of, uh, I believe it was the, the forestry department. That's a very remote sensing heavy um, organization that can get very granular data uh, on agriculture. And so if you want to understand exactly what locate what what your crops need in a particular location, they can do it. Um, they can count the number of leaves on your soybean plant uh, from the sky. So that's just to rattle off a few of the places that our, our students have gone. Um, you know, but again, uh, we're a fairly new program in the grand scheme of, of you know, if we're comparing AET to UAS, uh, we're a fairly new program. And so we're constantly building those partnerships and those pathways for our students to enter into. Um, and so we'll we'll continue doing that. Awesome, thanks, Professor Rose. Now, kind of shifting gears, I wanna get uh, some of the questions off to our students about their experience. So Alex, if you'd like to tell us kind of some about uh, your student organizations you're involved in and some stuff that you can do for fun as well. Yeah, um, and this is why my day-to-day -day is always so hectic. Um, so let's start with some of the student organizations I'm a part of. Uh, to begin with, I'm a part of AAAE here. Uh, that's the American Association of Airport Executives Purdue chapter. Um, there, I'm just a chapter member, um, but that really gives me the ability to see what are current airport administration and associate uh, and the association itself uh, looking for with your um, kind of your entry level um, airport supervisors or people looking to get into the airport side of things. Uh, and that's been a really beneficial group just as a, a, um, a resume builder, um, uh, you know, a chance to branch out, meet other management students and have, um, like I was saying, resume builder, also resume review. That's been the biggest benefit that I've had from that organization itself, being able to send that out to an executive in Florida, um, North Dakota, you know, all these other states have them review your resume and say, hey, okay, you can improve here, you can improve here. Um, I really like this, didn't so much like that. I think that feedback uh, has been really beneficial to me and I think has helped me tremendously when it comes to uh, applying that to my resume and then using that moving forward at the career fair. Uh, another thing I'm a part of um, on the aviation side of things is uh, aviation ambassadors. Uh, I believe all four of us, or sorry, all five of us are actually a part of aviation ambassadors. Um, with them, I've been able to go to FedEx. Uh, I'm actually going to business uh, Boeing business jet this weekend um, for a campus tour. And then uh, this past summer, I was actually able to travel to Oshkosh, uh, which was a great opportunity to uh, keep promoting what Purdue has to offer students and um, kind of, you know, <laughs> further develop our reputation out there in the aviation industry. Um, my final aviation association uh, is I'm also on the executive board for Purdue Aviation Day. I'm the safety and compliance director this year. Um, so definitely have a 
pretty hectic schedule uh, in the next coming days as uh, all that starts to build up. And I know um, Allison's being mute, but she can attest we're definitely putting in the grind right now uh, there. So she's smiling now, but uh, it's all starting to ramp up. Um, so everybody save the day, April 13th. Uh, please come out to the airport. It's a great opportunity to uh, see what Purdue has to offer, and we hope to see you guys there. Uh, and then, well, last one. <laughs> I'm also on the Purdue bass fishing team, so I have the really cool privilege of traveling every so often uh, to national events. Um, this past week, we had five boats go down to Lake Murray in Kentucky. Uh, we placed 12th was our best boat. Uh, I'm for that organization. I'm the assistant tournament director. So I get to help schedule all that. Uh, I pay for all the Airbnbs and wait forever to get reimbursed. Um, so it's, it's a lot of fun every now and then. Uh, but uh, it's a great opportunity to compete, uh, especially when we get to um, beat up on this school down in Bloomington. Um, we get to compete against them in the coming weeks. So I'm super excited about that. But uh, that's it for me. So if you guys want to pass that question on. Awesome, thanks, Alex. So kind of shifting gears a little bit, Allison, I'm gonna have you tell us uh, some advice you might give to a prospective student coming to Purdue. Yeah, I have two big pieces of advice for uh, future Boilermakers. One, um, get involved. Enjoy your time here at Purdue. Having a good community of friends and peers, colleagues and professors is going to make your life so much easier. Um, I didn't do that my freshman year, and then I learned, you know, my sophomore and junior years how important having that community is. Um, the second piece of advice is don't let someone else tell you no before you do something. So if you don't feel like you're smart enough or you're hardworking enough to go get a NASA internship or to be the club, don't discount discount yourself before someone else can. Let someone else tell you no, um, and then try again. And those are my two biggest piece of it, pieces of advice. Awesome, thanks, Allison. Um, with that, we have some time now. Dutch, would you like to give us any advice you have? I, we also have a question I'd like you to mention in your response about transportation from main campus out to the airport, if you could intermix that in with your recommendations to students. Yeah, I'll kind of first touch on the transportation. Um, I think there's a lot of great opportunities. We have a bus system that goes all around campus and even comes out to the airport that runs pretty regularly. I want to say every 20 to 30 minutes. Like, I feel like you won't, if you miss the bus the first time, you won't have to wait long for a second one. Um, and that runs pretty early in the morning to pretty late at night. I, I know it's here before the first classes and it stays well after all classes are done. Um, but on top of that, I've been biking out to the airport since my freshman year. I've enjoyed the bike. Um, can't, sometimes not too fun when you come out, it's dry out, and then you have to leave the airport and it's raining. I've, I've definitely wore a trash bag or two as a poncho. Um, but that, that creates for great memories. But also I've seen students walk. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit of a walk, but on a nice day, it's it's really a not bad of a trek. Um, it can be like good, like quiet time, just time to relax before you get into the busyness. Um, and then for students, there's also the opportunity to buy the parking pass um, and park out here on the airport. Um, and I, I guess I don't super, since I haven't bought a pass, I don't know if it's 50, $75, I'm not, it's not totally out of reach for the process that you, for what you get, getting to park right near the airport on rainy days. Um, down the road, there is a little bit of free parking, so it could eliminate a little bit of a walk. Um, but I found that there are very, a multitude of d diverse ways that you can get out here to the airport. Um, and then with advice, I think Allison touched on it. Community is one of the largest things. Um, finding those that you feel comfortable talking with. Um, but on top of that, get to know your professors. I have found that some of my, some of the opportunities and experiences that I've gotten to have would not have came if I did not reach out um, to Professor Rose before he even got to campus. I don't know how that happened, um, but it has led to now him mentoring me on this research project or getting involved at UAS Dispatch, which is where I worked, which Professor Rose talked on. That came from me kind of putting myself out there and talking to professors, seeing what op opportunities are, I think that can make you stand out as a student. Because um, I think sometimes it can be easy that once you get settled in and get busy, then you kind of just get in a normal routine. 
Um, but if you take a little extra time to kind of put yourself out there, whether it's in class or introducing yourself to your professors, I think that alone can go a long way without you even realizing it. Thank you, Dutch. I'll give my two cents as we wrap up here shortly. We have gone a little bit over our scheduled time, kind of throwing it back a little to when Dutch was talking about transportation to the airport. I like to mention some of the just little fun things as we are very fortunately closely located to our airport. So it's very easy to get back and forth. Dutch mentioned he's always rode his bike out here. I have owned an electric scooter for the past two years and Alex Janes, one of our panelists, uh, we would frequently uh, parallel each other going down the road to the airport, have nice conversations, see who had the faster electric vehicle. So you can have some fun on the way out to campus. Uh, just wanted to throw that in because we do have- Only a in a safe time. manner though, right? Yes, only in a safe manner. There you go. Sidewalk. Exactly. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I just want to give a shout out and thank you to all of the panelists who joined us tonight. It has been my pleasure to be able to host this with all of them for you guys on air. So that will wrap up our discussion tonight. Uh, thank you all for watching at home and for submitting your questions. We hope you gain some good insight into the different majors we have at the School of Aviation and Transportation Technology here at Purdue. Uh, thanks again to our panelists for getting on here. And thank you also to Kathy Pullings and John O'Malley, who have been behind the scenes sending in questions and directing our technology for this thing tonight. Uh, as mentioned, if we were not able to answer any of your questions throughout our information session, please feel free to reach out to us at techrecruit at purdue.edu if you have any additional questions. So we hope you will join us in one or more of these events for admitted students in the coming days, including our Purdue for Me's, uh, which is a great opportunity for you to come visit campus and see the family here at Purdue. There's also many different online informations uh, for student chats as well coming in the future. So you can find more information on, for those on opportunities at our admitted students information page, pardon me. Um, there's also another live coming up soon. Uh, it's on February 20th for all students admitted to the Polytechnic Institute and our different Polytech majors. Uh, that will be called Student Life and Last Minute Questions. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, it will be more of a personal focus on what it's like being a Purdue student. So you might want to tune in in a couple weeks for that if you're looking for that perspective. Uh, all of those broadcasts you can find live at the website Polytechnic purdue.edu slash live. Uh, just a quick reminder as well for everyone as admissions decisions have been rolling out, your deadline to accept your offer is May 1st. So please get those in. Uh, we'd love to see you here at Purdue next year. Um, that concludes all I have to say for you all. And thank you again for joining us tonight. Have a wonderful rest of your night and boiler up.